video, I'm going to walk through custom object integration with Pardot uh, and explain what it can and what it can't do. Now, with the lowest level of Pardot um, called Growth, the Growth Edition, you have access to prospect records, opportunity records, and account records. If you want anything in addition to that, you'll need to upgrade or pay for the custom object integration feature. So prospect records in Pardot um, connect to either contacts or leads within Salesforce. It doesn't make a difference. And any of these prospect fields right here, uh, Pardot can, can write to them as well as read them. And that's, what, that's unique with prospect fields. When it comes to account fields or opportunity fields or anything we add through the custom object integration, Pardot cannot write to those records. It can just read that data. But it's still useful because there's lots of marketing teams that want to segment their database based off some relationship with a custom object. So if we click into custom objects here, and this is under Pardot settings, object and field configuration, you can see I've already added a custom object. So this already existed within Salesforce, and then I just mapped it uh, to Pardot. And in this case, uh, created a custom object called projects. And so there's plenty of scenarios where I could think of a marketing team or account management team wanting to understand the status of a project in order to send automated updates or emails uh, to that particular prospect. So if we click on configure fields for this custom object, it's going to automatically pull in all of the fields uh, on that object from Salesforce. And on the right hand side, you can choose which of these is relevant that you want to see in tables within Pardot. So we don't need to see all of these. Uh, and as you can tell, this is a very simple uh, object. You know, really, we only have status um, and project name. And I just wanted to keep it simple for this example. So if we go into the Salesforce side, we can look at a contact here, Miss Edna Frank. And we scroll down. We've got, uh, she's related to our custom object, to one of our custom records uh, called a project. And so with this project, just called it Sales Cloud Consulting. And you can see the status is set to in progress. So back in Pardot, here we can choose which fields we want to be visible within a table. Um, and once we've set this up, we can then automate based off this data in either segmentation or in automations. So let's go over to prospects and take a look at a segmentation list. So we click on segmentation lists. We've got a few to choose from. And I've already created one for this example called prospects with projects in progress. We click into that. This is a dynamic list. So we set some rules uh, and then people are going to automatically match or not match those rules. In this case here, we have Edna Frank. She showed up on this particular list. So let's go ahead and look at her prospect record real quick. So here, this is pretty standard, right? Activity on the right. We've got the, the basic information on the left, any custom fields. But what you're, what you're also going to have in the upper right is related objects. So this is where that custom object relationship is going to show up. And one thing that's really important to remember is that Pardot is always looking at the data in your Salesforce org uh, through the lens of an individual person, uh, whether that's a lead or a contact. So if you want to map a custom object to Pardot, it has to be related to a lead or a contact. Otherwise, it's really not going to do anything for you. Uh, within the system. Uh, you'll have that data being pulled in, but we won't be able to run any automation rules or dynamic lists against it. It's only relevant uh, if it's related to a contact or a lead. So under related objects here, we can see our project name, Sales Cloud Consulting, uh, and some of the fields that I selected to be visible in uh, table displays. In this case here, you can see it says in progress. Let's go back to our segmentation list and I'll show you the rules that were set up. So if you click edit on the list, we'll get to uh, the rules that we can set. And here, you know, the first drop down is going to be all those standard options you should be used to. But we've also we also have this custom object choice. So pick that 
and then you've got uh, three options after that choice. We can just look at all prospects that have some relationship to this custom object uh, or no relationship with one or related with properties. And so this is really talking about field values. So we chose related with properties. And in this case, we're gonna choose our object. We only have one syncing, so project is appropriate. Um, and this is also here, it says by contact, because if you have multiple um, leads referring to contact, excuse me, if you have multiple fields on a custom object that are referencing contacts or, or leads, uh, you can choose which relationship is the one you care about. So let's say, for example, with this project, we might have two uh, fields referencing contacts. One is for customer, the other one is, say, partner. If we had both of those, we could choose which one was relevant for this segmentation list. In this case, we only have one, and it's called contact. And then underneath there, we can add details about those field values on that record. So here's our different fields available to us, you know, last activity date, uh, record ID, you know, pretty standard stuff, and then status, which is a pick list. Uh, and in this case, we chose is and in progress. So I want all prospects related to projects at, on the contact field with a status that is in progress. And that's how we got to this list of just, you know, two people in this particular case, but Edna Frank and Avi Green. Uh, and that's how you could build a segmentation list off a custom object. The other place where it's available is under automation rules. And it works really the exact same way, right? Set your name for your automation rule. And then just like in a dynamic list, we can create rules, choose custom object, and then we've got the same choices. We want somebody who's related to a custom object, in this case, project. We want them related by the contact field. And if we chose related with properties, we'll get an extra option to set the values of those different fields on that record. So it's pretty simple, uh, but powerful. If you've got some custom object like projects or orders or what have you, and there's a relationship between a contact or a lead record uh, with that custom record, then it's a good idea to go ahead and um, set up the sync between Pardot and that custom object so that you can use it in your segmentation and your automations in Pardot.